okay uh, let's get started today uh, the goal for today's class is to talk about accelerated methods this is not part of the nonlinear programming book uh, there are discussions in the nonlinear programming book but it's not studied in great details in the book uh, so today's lecture is actually taken from a book that we all have uh, access to through university library introductory lectures in convex optimization this is 2004 the book was written in 2004 but of course the book is based on the uh, on the research done in 1960s to 1980s. And the idea in accelerated methods is, uh, like we discussed in the previous class, I want to come up with an algorithm. Uh, so this is steepest descent, uh, xk minus alpha k gradient fxk. This is the steepest descent. But because I've already computed so many different gradients, I want to be able to, um, what I want to do is, I want to use minus alpha zero gradient fx zero, minus alpha one gradient fx one. Uh, I should say alpha zero k, alpha one k, so on minus alpha kk gradient fxk. So I already have these F, gradient of fx0, gradient of fx1, and all these things computed. Uh, I just want to multiply it with some scalar quantity. And I want to get my xk plus 1. And I want this to be faster. I mean, arguably, uh, this method would be faster than this method in order to converse to the optimal solution. So the question is, how do we design these algorithms that are faster than the steepest descent? And actually, it doesn't require any computation at all, because we already have all these gradients computed and stored in the memory. So it requires slightly larger memory. But memory is not a problem. Computation is the problem. It's the main bottleneck in many of these applications. So the goal is, how much can we improve by? Okay. So actually, there are, there are two questions. One is, of course, come up with the algorithm. But the second thing is to understand, theoretically, how much can we improve by using this algorithm rather than this algorithm? OK, so those are the two questions that we'll be focusing on today. OK. So before I jump into the theory, I want to talk about the notion of convex function and strongly convex function. And then I want to talk about the convergence properties of gradient descent, the steepest descent method. OK. So convex function, we all know, is gradient of second derivative of fx is positive semi-definite. That's convex function. We will also assume that. The function f is Lipschitz. Or gradient of f is Lipschitz. What that means is second derivative of f of x is less than or equal to some capital M times identity matrix. Which means what this uh, statement means is gradient square fx mi minus gradient square fx is positive semi-definite. So capital M is the Lipschitz constant of gradient of f. So the first thing is just the definition. And the second thing is uh, the definition of gradient of f is Lipschitz.
OK. So that's the definition of convex function with Lipschitz gradient. Let's talk about strongly convex function with Lipschitz gradient. And this is the case when mi is less than equal to second derivative of fx is less than equal to capital mi for all uh, x in rn. Okay, and small m is greater than zero, and of course capital M is also greater than zero. So that's a strongly convex function with Lipschitz gradient. Yes, please. Uh, capital M is a scalar, and I is the identity matrix. So I'm just multiplying the identity matrix by a scalar. So you have M, 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 M along the diagonal. Same thing here, you have small m, small, small m along the diagonal. And you want, when I say that A is less than or equal to B, it just means that B minus A is a positive semi-definite matrix. Any questions so far on the definition of convex functions and strongly convex functions? Okay. So, yeah, so in the convex function, I want the second derivative to be uh, a positive semi definite matrix. So, some of the eigenvalues can be zero at some points in the space. In the strongly convex function, the eigenvalues has to be strictly larger than m, where m itself is strictly larger than 0. And that has to be true over the entire space. So that's the difference between convex function and strongly convex function. Let me show you by picture, because I think it's an important distinction. This is a convex function but not a strongly convex function because along this direction the second derivative has zero eigenvalue okay so it's a convex function but not strongly convex This is a strongly convex function. The easiest way to remember is if you have a valley and you have a river flowing through valley, it's a convex but not a strongly convex function, the shape of the valley. If you have a lake in the valley, then it's a strongly convex function in the valley. Okay, so that's the, there is curvature on all sides in this case, whereas in this case there are some directions in which there is no curvature. Okay, and that's the case with convex function and strongly convex function. Any other question? Okay. All right, so let me let me erase everything. Any, if there are no questions, I'm going to erase both sides of the board. And then we'll start talking about the, the accelerated methods. Oh, no, I have to first talk about the, the convergence speed of steepest descent for convex case and strongly convex case.
So we have the steepest descent algorithm, xk plus 1 equals to xk minus alpha k gradient fxk. In the convex case, We typically have fxk minus fx star is less than or equal to some c1 over k square plus c2. This is how we measure the convergence speed of steepest descent method. So we look at the function evaluated at xk. We look at the optimal value of the optimization. And it decays. So this is upper bounded by two constants, c1. Uh, so it's upper bounded by c1 over k squared plus c2, where c1 and c2 are some constants. That depends on the different parameters about the function. So it could depend on the Lipschitz condition. It could depend on how you are picking alpha k and so on. But this is what typically the convergence speed of uh, gradient of steepest descent for the convex case looks like. OK. The situation for strongly convex case is slightly more complicated. Here, typically, xk minus x star 2 norm is less than or equal to some r raised to k. Well, c1 r raised to k x naught minus x star 2 norm and fxk minus fx star is less than or equal to some c2 uh, let me check what the m minus, OK. Fxk plus 1. fxk plus 1 minus fx star is less than or equal to this square fxk minus fx star. Here alpha k is chosen according to line minimization. This r here is typically m minus m over m plus m. Okay, so that's what this r typical typical value is, and c1 is some constant that again depends on the function and the way you are picking alpha k. But in strongly convex, one thing you will notice is that the error goes down exponentially fast. Something that we have talked about in the in one of the previous classes. So error goes exponentially down to 0. And the function also converges to the optimal value. The function value also converges to the optimal value 
exponentially fast in this case. Okay? Yeah, yeah, they are all scalar. They are all scalar. And R is R is equal to M minus M over M plus M. Deriving these uh, bounds are extremely like time consuming process, so I'm not doing it in the class. Uh, but if you can look at appropriate references where these things are derived rigorously. For the quadratic case, you can actually do it by hand. Okay, so you don't even have to uh, worry about it. For quadratic case, things are easy to do. But for general case, you can also show using the results from the quadratic case. Okay, so the thing that, the important thing that we notice here in this particular uh, uh, situation, when we have steepest descent where alpha k is picked according to minim line minimization rule because that's uh, very easy to think about. So if you pick alpha k according to line minimization rule, you're in the convex case, this is how the value of the function evaluated at x k is going to decrease. So it's one over k square. So it's not exponential, it's actually converging very slowly. On the other hand, when you have strongly convex problem, then you see that the convergence to the optimal solution is exponentially fast, and the convergence to the optimal value is also exponentially fast. And so that's uh, just the nature of strongly convex function. If you are applying steepest descent, you will convert very fast to x star. Now one thing to note, or one thing to ask is, is this the best we can do? Okay, can we do better than this? Can we get a convergence speed that is better than this? Can I get an R by changing the algorithm, by making use of all the past gradients that I've computed, can I make this R much smaller than M minus M over M plus M? So that's the question people are asking. So in steepest descent, we are not using information about the past gradients. Now in the accelerated method, I want to use the information about the past gradient. But I only want to use the information in a linear fashion. So I don't want to use like a nonlinear transformation of previous gradients. Uh, just, I just want to use the linear span of previous gradients to do the acceleration. Okay, so here is the result from the book, Introductory Lectures in Convex Optimization, written by Nestorov in 2004. So here are the two results he proved. The first result is there exists a convex function f from Rn to R such that uh, such that an algorithm of type star, so I'm going to use type star for denoting the algorithm xk plus 1 equals to xk minus alpha 0k So that's my type star algorithm, where I'm using all the past gradients. So an algorithm of type star cannot do better than uh, 1 over, or C1 over C2 plus K square.
Okay. So that's the first result. He explicitly constructs a convex function f, which has one of the eigenvalues zero. So along some direction, the, there is no curvature in the function. So he explicitly constructs a convex function such that if you use the best algorithm within this class, you cannot do better than c1 over c2 plus k square, which is this part that I'm talking about. So fxk minus fx star is always greater than c1 over c2 plus k square for some appropriate values of c1 and c2. So that's the first result. Let's think about the second result. I'm going to erase this type star thing. And the second thing is, uh, there is a, there exists a family of algorithms that achieves the lowest rate of convergence. Uh, in the strongly convex case. So he came up with a family of algorithms which would attain the lowest rate of convergence. I should actually say, instead of saying lowest, because lowest sounds bad, I'm going to use fastest. But by lowest, I mean that this r is very, very small. It's as small as it can be. You cannot improve upon that. OK? There is also a one prime, which is for strongly convex function. So I want to, but th that, uh, that uh, particular sentence is a bit more complicated. So I'll just show you the math without going into what that sentence was going to look like. Okay, so these are the two things we are discussing in, this, in today's class. Um, I'm going to introduce a family of algorithms in the end, because that's a bit uh, complicated set of mathematical expressions. Uh, but I'm going to introduce the accelerated methods before introducing the family of algorithms. And I hope I have enough time to finish all these topics. OK. Let's try to explicitly construct the function f, the convex function f from Rn to R, such that we cannot do better than this. So my x is in Rn. I'm going to define fk of x. So I'm using xk to denote the iteration uh, k. So I need to define x. OK, here is how I'm going to define it. x1, xn. So these are the n components. So superscript in the bracket, that's the, in, in the, yeah. So superscript in the bracket, that's the, what's that called? Uh, the n components of x for the purpose of this class. And I'm going to define fk of x as m over 4, 1 over 2, x1 square plus summation i equals 1 to k minus 1.
So the subscript, so xk plus 1 equals to xk minus blah, 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 right? So this, this is the kth iteration. Whereas the superscript k is the kth element of the vector x. So x is a n-dimensional vector. So it has n components. And so the superscript k is the kth component of x. OK? Yes, please. Couldn't our number of iterations exceed the number of elements in x? x n is the number of elements. Right, and you have that one, in, like the x, the kth element. That's right. This is the kth but, element. But couldn't k become larger than x? So right now, yes, n would become larger than x, like in the so in the. Couldn't k become larger than n, like as we go? Right. So wouldn't this fail then? Because um, Right, but the way this, uh, this problem is set up, let's, let's go to the result and you will see why we are making that implicit assumption that k is smaller than n. So the, the goal here is to identify the lowest bound. So you, have, you are free to pick whatever function you want and whatever dimension of x you want and how so many iteration you want to take in your steepest descent. So all of that is free parameter for you to pick. So we will pick a specific set of parameters to get the ultimate lower bound on the function, on the steepest descent uh, convergence. So the facts, some facts in place. So the fact one, fk is convex. So it's a convex function. The way to show that this is convex function, you take the second derivative, and it has a bunch of rows that are 0. Uh, oh, here I'm, of course, assuming that n is larger than k. So you'll have a bunch of zeros because of which uh, fk cannot have. So there are some directions along which fk doesn't have a curvature. So it's not a strongly convex function. Oh, that's pretty much the only. Oh, the second is fk is Lipschitz. No, gradient of fk is Lipschitz. And actually, the Lipschitz coefficient is capital M. <clears throat> so I have a convex function with the Lipschitz gradient. And this is the problem I want to solve. I want to minimize x in Rn, f of 2k plus 1x. And my k, I'm picking a k which is less than or equal to n minus 1 over 2. So in, in, in mathematical optimization, this is typically the way to get the ultimate lower bound on the convergence. You are free to pick whatever function you want. You are free to pick whatever dimension of x you want. You are free to pick how many, so, how, how many iterations of steepest descent you want to take, or whatever algorithm you want to take. So all of those are free parameters. So here is what I have picked. I have picked n sufficiently large so that the number of iterations satisfy 1 is less than or equal to k is less than or equal to n minus 2. And I've picked the function f to be to have 2k plus 1 indices. So remember, this is fk of x that is defined in this fashion. So I'm using 2k plus 1 here. So then any algorithm, any algorithm, of type star, this is the result. So this, let me write it as theorem. Very important theorem in the optimization theory. So any algorithm of type star satisfies f 
xk minus fx star is greater than or equal to 3m over 32 x naught minus x star over k plus 1 square. Okay. So in this case, what we are seeing is no matter what algorithm of type star you pick, no matter how you pick your step sizes, this is the ultimate lower bound at the end of kth iteration. So f of x, f of x is equal to f of 2k plus 1x. So no matter what you do, this is the ultimate lower bound. You cannot beat this lower bound. Same thing here, you cannot beat this lower bound. So no matter how many past information you pick, uh, the convergence rate is going to decay as one over k plus one square at the very uh, least. Like that's, that's the best you can get. There's nothing better than that. That's for the convex case. So this is a convex function and this is the convex case. Let's try to see what happens for the strongly convex function. Any question on that before I proceed to the strongly convex case? So now, for the strongly convex case, I'm going to Consider x in R infinity. F is a function from R infinity to R, so now my n is infinite dimension. Uh, so x is infinite dimensional, and my f of x. Let me call Q to be capital M over small m. I'm I'm trying to come up with a strongly convex function. And here is my function definition, f of x is equal to small m q minus one. Uh, let me write it as q over eight x one square summation. Okay, so I came up with a strongly convex function, which is, which has a eigenvalue between small m and capital M, and the function is given by this expression. It's a function over infinite number of variables. 
But the whole theory that we are studying works for even infinite dimensional problems. So we don't, we, we don't have to worry about the fact that, oh, it may not work for infinite dimensional. It works. No problem. And here is the theorem. So the rest of the statement is the same. I want to minimize this function. And I'm picking any algorithm of type star. And I get xk minus x star is greater than or equal to square root of q minus 1 over square root of q plus 1 raised to k x 0 minus x star to naught. This is the ultimate lower bound you can get q. Yes, please. So, in, in a convex case, we were running the above expression k times f k of x. Correct. But this is only a single expression that we run one time? Uh, right, because uh, the n is equal to infinity. So, you don't have to restrict yourself to k. This it goes all the way to infinity. So the kth iteration, so after the kth iteration of, grade, of the gradient descent using an algorithm of type star, you get xk, and you have this x star, and this is the ultimate lower bound you have. Okay, you cannot beat that lower bound. So you pick, you can pick any algorithm of type star, pick any way to pick step size, and you have that algorithm. You can use any amount of history. You can pick any alpha k, uh, sequence of alpha k's. Uh, this is the ultimate lower bound. You cannot beat this. It's not easy to come up with these results. So don't think that he came up with it in like a couple of evenings. It must have taken a long time to come up with these functions and come up with these expressions. It's an entire chapter of the book. And I'm compressing the entire chapter in one class. So, so the major uh, results actually uh, is, is not the major result. But the majority of the chapter is dedicated to proving this result. And dedicated to proving this result. And it takes a whole bunch of expressions to get there. So I'm avoiding all of that discussion in this class. But this is the ultimate lower bound. For the strongly convex case, this is the ultimate lower bound for the convex case. Now the question is, OK, fine. We now know the ultimate lower bound. Can we meet this lower bound? Can we come up with an algorithm where this inequality is in the reverse direction? So we are actually converging with this particular rate. Or in the same, in, in the same way, in this case, the inequality is in the other way. So we are actually converging according to 1 over k plus 1 square. So here are the two algorithms that achieves this uh, convergence speed. And it's much faster than steepest descent. So in steepest descent, this was q minus 1 over q plus 1. And in this case, we have square root of q minus 1 over square root of q plus 1. So this number is much smaller than q minus 1 over q plus 1. That is something you can, you can check at home. OK, this is, this is true for any q greater than 0. OK, so now what are the two algorithms? Uh, let me raise this side of the board and talk about the two algorithms. So one is Polyax. momentum method which is yk plus 1 equals to yk minus alpha k oh let me just use xk not yk 
because I've been using xk here. xk plus 1 equals to xk minus This is 1964, this is 1983, Okay. So think about these two algorithms. It's uh, slightly more complicated than steepest descent, uh, but and there are two step sizes. Here you have alpha k and beta k and you have alpha k and beta k and there are ways to pick appropriate values of alpha k and beta k and I'll defer you to appropriate references to figure that out uh, which is not very uh, complicated but, but still it requires some amount of effort to get the best alpha k and beta k. But let's look at the memory requirement for running these algorithms which are provably better than steepest descent. Okay. What is the memory requirement to run this algorithm? So computational requirement you just have to compute one gradient, right? So computational requirement is not that high. What about the memory requirement? What extra variable you need to store in the memory for running this algorithm? xk minus 1, that is it. You just have to store a vector in the memory and you can run this algorithm, polyx momentum method. Memory is cheap, okay? It is very cheap. Computation is hard. So I don't want to compute the gradient, but I can uh, have extra memory in the, in the processor for running the momentum method. Now let's look at accelerated gradient method. What are the extra things you need to keep track of in the memory? You need xk minus 1 and you need zk. Just two more vectors are needed to be stored in the memory and you just have to compute the gradient once and you can have accelerated method which means you are provably better than steepest descent in these two situations. Okay, so very little memory requirement, uh, very little like almost zero extra processing. Uh, additions and subtractions they do not really take too much effort. So I am not even counting them as, uh, uh, as processing uh, as something that is that is taking up processing time. So very simple processing and you get faster convergence using these accelerated methods. And there is no nonlinear computation of the gradients as was the case in quasi-Newton's method. So if you ask me 
you have a problem, what is it that you want to do with that problem, you should definitely try quasi-Newton's method because quasi-Newton's method converges much faster than these methods. However, uh, if you cannot do quasi-Newton's method because it requires you to keep track of an entire matrix, which is like n cross n matrix, you know, that's what DK, DK is an n cross n matrix, so you have to have that in your memory. If you cannot do that, then you should use these momentum methods because you know that this is better than, strictly better than steepest descent method. If you cannot use momentum method, then you use steepest descent. You use steepest descent in the context of, say, training a neural network because you have very high dimension problem, but, uh, but you can use momentum methods in those cases as well. And there are people in the past uh, decade or so, people have tried to investigate how to use momentum methods for neural network training because of the appealing property that they converge to the optimal solution much faster. Not an optimal solution, but a, a stationary solution much faster. Uh, in the case of convex problems, of course, they would converge to the optimal solution. Any questions so far on these methods? No? So everything is clear so far? Now the question is, I have, uh, when does the class end? I think 2.45, I have five minutes. So I have five minutes, so I'll tell you that this is not the only method. So what Nesterov did was, of course, he has one method, he proposed one method that gets to the optimal solution faster, but he actually proposed much more stronger thing, which is a family of method which achieves the, which can be used to come up with any convergence rate that is, uh, lower bounded by that convergence rate I had mentioned in the, on the board. So here is a family of method. So we define, we have a sequence PK from Rn to R, and we have a sequence lambda K greater than zero. Lambda K is a scalar. K goes from one to infinity. Is an estimate sequence. sequence of f from Rn to R if and only if. So this is the definition of an estimate sequence. The first requirement is lambda k goes to 0 and the second requirement is phi k of x is less than or equal to 1 minus lambda k of fx plus lambda k of phi 0 of x. So this is the requirement. I should probably take k equals 0 to infinity. So this is a requirement on the estimate sequence of a, of a function f from Rn to R. And he has a cute result.
Okay, so now what he did was all you have to do is come up with this sequence lambda k and phi k that satisfies these two conditions and you come up with a gradient descent algorithm such that the sequence xk satisfies this condition then the convergence rate is this is a constant because it doesn't change with k and you will have f of xk minus f of x star less than equal to lambda k. So if your lambda k is decreasing as k goes to infinity, if your lambda k is decreasing exponentially fast, um, it also has to satisfy that lower bound. Of course, lambda k cannot go exponentially fast uh, according to whatever you pick. It has to go, f it has to be, so lambda k has to be greater than equal to square root of q minus 1 over square root of q plus 1. You cannot pick lambda k below that because that's the ultimate lower bound. But if this is your lambda k, then you can come up with the sequence of functions phi k. Oh, I should put a k here. You can come up with a sequence of function phi k that satisfies this condition, and you will get the convergence rate as fast as you wanted. And the Nesterov's momentum method, the Nesterov's accelerated gradient method, is actually derived by an explicit construction of this phi k and lambda k and that's how he got the convergence rate which meets the uh, lower bound. So that's all I had on accelerated methods. It's a very, very exciting field. Uh, it's not necessarily that, I mean it is used in some of the more advanced optimization packages but if you look at some of the basic packages in Python or MATLAB, they are not really using accelerated methods. So you won't really find it hard-coded, but if you use TensorFlow, for instance, the accelerated methods are hard-coded in TensorFlow. But still, it's a nice uh, theory, and hopefully it will uh, help you in some of the optimization problems you'll be solving in the future. So thank you for your attention. We'll talk about optimization over convex sets in the next class.